All right, Kurt, tell us what we're doing this morning. All right, we're going to get the generator fired up. we got the generator in the boat, and when I crank this thing up, we're going to add a positive charge of electricity out on the end of the booms on the boat. The bottom of the boat acts as a negative, and hopefully we'll generate an electrical field where the strikers will come up right in front of the boat where you all can see them. Okay. That's the process. So. Here we go. All right, let's go see what happens up front. Now, Steve, do we move when we do this? Yeah, we'll move around and sometimes fast. Sometimes you'll see some come up and then you'll go in circles to try to get them in a group. So it works pretty well. If you're getting fast current, you got to keep going downstream because they'll come up behind the boat a lot. So keep an eye behind the boat for us. Okay. Now how long does this usually, do you make long runs or short runs? It'll, until we get the live well full of fish. Usually get about eight or ten fish in the live well and then we stop and work those up and then start over again. Okay. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, what you're looking at is these electrodes stuck in the water moving forward. There's one on the left, there's one on the right, there's a cart that has come up based on the electrodes. But obviously that's what we're not not what we're looking for today. But these electrodes were moving forward in the boat and working a rock line off to your right. And hopefully we'll uh, grab some striper or get in here and get them tagged. But they say this process, these fish school up along these rocks. And then as we move forward back along this line of rocks, hopefully we'll find some sitting in here. And this is what Kurt does, folks. He just drives this boat with the electrodes out the front like you just saw. He's got his hearing protection on, so but he's sitting next to that generator. You wouldn't think it makes a lot of noise, but if you had to sit behind it for hours and hours, then I'm sure you'd notice it. But that little generator right there underneath that net produces the current that goes through the electrodes that we just looked at. And that's the whole idea here. Just nice and easy along this rock bank. This is Steve. He's going to take care of things here. I'm going to show you some of these tags. Those That's how small they are. Little teeny tiny tags they're going to put in there. All right. Very small. But first, we got to check each fish to make sure it doesn't already have a tag from last year. Does that happen very often? You pick up another tagged fish? We tagged 340 stripers last year and we found 10 recaptures that had a tag in them. So it's a pretty low percentage. It certainly is. Man, these guys are getting excited now. Put the wand on them. No tag? No tag. 578. My tag's in this little syringe. Up under the cheek muscle. I didn't get that very good. We'll get the next we'll get the next one. Alright, there's where it goes in. Alright. Push it up there. Love on him a little. Now that tag is right up under his eye. Okay. And he's ready to haul it. He's ready. He says, that's enough of that. There you go. I think you're right. Oh, good thing. See some of these pictures of these ones we've seen. 40 pound striper is a handful. Yeah. Well, I bet it is. He doesn't want to cooperate. It's a piece of work, I'm telling you. Yeah. Fish number two. Amazing, amazing. Kurt's writing down the information on the tablet. How big is this second fish? It's probably about a six pound fish. Yeah, and he is 28 or so inches, 27 inches about. Six, okay, six. put the wand on him. And I'm going to get a close up of this okay. insertion of this. Thank you, Steve, for running live here. Okay, we're going to show you folks where this needle goes. Just underneath. 
pushes that in and this is where he'll probably get excited now he's ready to go one more dust. I like it. he's not quiet as upset he's ready to go though yep let's get out of here those tags are passive they're they're inert and they just sit there in the fish okay, when, we, I got you. when we run the wand over the top of them that sends a charge to the little coil in the tag yeah which transmits which back the yeah. ID number on the fish yeah. so you have to actually get the fish in hand within a couple inches and run the reader over them you can't uh, you can't track them from a distance you right. got to get them in hand yeah it's not like the uh, those bigger telemetry tags that we've used on some projects they'll transmit they're an active tag and they'll transmit a signal I got you know, up to a half mile or a mile and you can actually you know locate them using a, a directional hydrophone mm -hmm. or a remote sensor out in the river but these we actually have to grab and get yeah. in hand but you only get 14 months out of those other tags because they don't have battery life right. or these will last a lot longer because they yeah. get activated yeah. mm -hmm. You get better. I mean, better information with fish in hand, but you can't get the remote yeah. readers on the bridges and, and have them when they yeah. swim by like the other tags. So, out of the 340 you've tagged so far, you've caught 10. Well, we've only recaptured 10. 10. Yeah. That that means there's a lot of fish up there. Right. When your recapture rate is that low, right, that tells you your population they're, is pretty big. Yeah. What was the uh, growth like in those? They grow about eight millimeters every month, which is three eighths to a half inch a month. On the, the average of those ten fish that we recaptured, they they grow about that rate. Um, some of them grew as much as almost an inch over the course of three months. Yeah. Oh. What's the distance the first, now? Do you when you insert those and you recapture one later, you can measure the distance from where you were. Yes. What's the greatest distance? I mean, you hear a lot of that with the spoonbill, yeah. the distance they travel. But what about one of these guys? What's a bigger distance or yeah. an average distance? Most Nine of the ten that we recaptured were recaptured in the same tailwater where they were tagged. Okay. So they were kind of home bodies. One fish we tagged last April below Eufaula, and we recaptured it in the lower Illinois River. Whoa. Um, and that was 45 to 48 miles away from where he was tagged. So that's unusual. Well, we don't know yet. We right. haven't gotten enough information yeah. to know if it's unusual. We know they travel long distances on spawning runs and that kind of thing. Um, my guess is that those fish below Eufaula go up below Eufaula in April, like when we tagged it. They go up there to do a spawning run or make that run. Later in the summer when we recaptured that one, he was in the lower Illinois probably because it's got that nice cool water and that's where they go for the summer. So. Is there any designation between male and female? When we can tell uh, during the peak of the spawn, we'll squeeze them, and if we get uh, milt or eggs out of them, we'll we'll mark it down as a male or female if we know for sure. But pretty much, that's April and May or so. Do you find the male or females more transient than the others, or haven't seen that pattern yet? Okay. Um, that's why we're we're hoping to get a bunch more tags in the fish this year, and as our recapture rate goes up, that's the kind of stuff we'll be. Able then you'll be begin, begin to collect more data. Yep. All right, folks, we are up against the dam. You can see they're releasing one, two, three, four, five flumes right now. We're approaching the corner up here in some shallow water. I'm told it's about 10 feet deep. And the idea here is to see these electrodes uh, scatter up some fish. It's pretty noisy. I hope this is working well. Steve's off to my left here with his dip net, and we're going to see what happens. That's a lot closer than you think, folks. That's about 30 yards. And if you'll notice, if you can see in the film, they don't get any closer than where we are now. Because what happens is that water current is underneath there, as a lot of you are aware. And this is about as close as you want to be. There's one, two, you can see them just surfacing. We found the load. We know where they are. 
They're just lying on the surface. Wait to be tagged. Wow. That's pretty incredible. All right, folks, we got a nice uh, live well full of fish. We'll be tagging those here in just a minute. Uh, paddlefish, blue catfish, carp, drum, and of course these big stripers came up to the top. They, uh, they actually let me net one. I managed to get one, so they were uh, jumping from side to side there, so we're going to have a lot of fun here in just a minute. It's, uh, All right. It gets a little more challenging when you get bigger. Near him. Near him. Just walk right up there and talk to those people up at the core office. Yeah, they're very right cooperative. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's one tag. And out he goes. Maybe we'll get him again here in a minute. We'll check him for his check him for a tag. And then 791. Right here on the cheek. One little poke and he's done. Okay, so we don't have any tags in And if here. it doesn't beep at you, that means we got no tags. That's good enough? That's good. Now, no ID found. Yep. I'm going to hand you that. We hold it facing upright so the tag doesn't fall out. Yep. And just pull that top off the needle. And right about there. Yep. Get underneath the scale. Poke up towards his eye. And then just a little bit more. Push it in. There you go. Right there. And plunge that thing in. Make sure the scale gets down. And that's in there. That's what the love pad is. Make sure that <laughs> scale gets in there. Nice work. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Now I'll send him back into the... Now we'll throw him back in and I'm going to mark that one in the in the notebook as Paul's fish. So if we find that one, <laughs> we know that, that's your fish. And what was that measurement? 737. 737, which is about... Almost 30 inches, 29 inches. Beautiful. Thank you very much. That was fun. All right. Steve's got a baby paddlefish. We caught up in there. One of the other biologists is interested in those. So they're talking about the 99-year class is uh, supporting what we're catching now. And the concern is, where are these little guys? Because they're not seeing as many of them. So they're going to be looking. Now, how old do you think that fish is, Steve? About three years old? Last year's. Probably last year's fish. Oh, okay. So just last year's fish. Nice looking. Well, we got another good load. It's our third good load today. There is a nice big hybrid in there, and that was uh, still below, still below the dam here. Open, you can see all the water they're letting out. One, two, three, four, five flumes. Steve and Kurt will be tagging these, and we're getting about ten or twelve every pass now, so that's a good number. How we doing, Mr. Kurt? Pretty well. We're at about 25 fish. It looks like we got 10 or 12 more in the live well. So, so 50 is the goal today. And if we can get 50, I'd be tickled. That's a nice hybrid. Nice up close picture in here. On that, see that tongue? See those two tooth patches right there? Uh -huh. How they're close together? Yeah. That's a hybrid. I'll show you a striper. Okay. And now, folks, we're not tagging the hybrids today because we just got to look at a hybrid's mouth. We're going to look at a Strap his mouth and then get out of the road here. Okay, you see, see how he's got more space in between those teeth? Yeah, he's got white stripe in there. Uh huh. That hybrid's going to be a lot closer together, too. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Tell.